Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, we are coming into the home stretch for the plant-based bundle. It's been going on now for about 11 days, and we have about seven hours left. So if you want to get $8,600 worth of content, including 3,000 or more recipes, over 200 ebooks, programs, and courses for the low price of $50, never to be seen again. You've got about seven hours to do it. And please realize that bundles never reappear. We do do bundles often with different uh, producers and contributors, but the content, once it's gone, it's gone. So please check it out. And uh, I think you'll really like it, especially if you're struggling with recipes or going vegan. There's workout programs, there's fitness programs, there's weight loss programs, there's recipes, there's courses, some that cost $300 if you were to purchase separately. It's about 25 cents a product. So anyway, to kick off the final hours of the bundle, we have one of the bundle contributors. Her name is Ella Major. She's often known as the Sexy Fit Vegan. And she's not only going to talk about her offering in the bundle, but her mic method of helping helping people lose weight without even trying. Now that's something that I can get behind. Hi, Ella. How are you? Hey, Chef AJ. I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? Good. I'm so happy you're in the bundle. Tell us about what book you have in the bundle or course. Yeah, I have the ultimate starter guide to becoming a sexy fit vegan. And it's actually, I believe it's like almost a hundred pages. So it's more of, it's like a real book and a guide and it's got my mic method in there of uh, eating for losing weight without trying. It's got lots of recipes. It tells you how I eat. Uh, and then it gives you some structure into creating a method of eating that works best for you and your unique body and your lifestyle and, and all of that. So it's, it's, uh, it's really comprehensive. I'm really, really proud of it, actually. I worked really hard on it. And uh, it, I think it's helping a lot of people. That's great. Is this something that people could get after the bundle if for some reason they don't wish to get this ridiculous savings? Nope. I'm not offering it right now outside the bundle. So the bundle is the only way to purchase it. And uh, I'm also doing a giveaway as part of um part of the bundle as well for people who purchase from my link. So I've got a little gift box with a hundred dollars worth of vegan goodies that I'm sending to one lucky winner. Oh my God, that's fantastic. So are you allowed to share a little bit about what the mic method is? Yeah, sure. Cause uh, like I said, I've actually recently, I was doing all group coaching for a long time and just this year, I kind of dialed it back and decided I wanted to work with some individuals. And so that's, I'm doing some individual coaching now, which I'm really enjoying. And one of my most recent clients, she's three weeks in uh, or almost a month in, and she didn't have a lot of weight to lose, but through doing uh, the process, going through the process as I've designed it, she has, and I, I really encourage people not to weigh themselves. The focus is not on on weight loss. I say weight loss just happens as the side effect of doing this. And uh, yeah, she she did step on a scale after about almost a month. And she's like, I cannot believe it without, without dieting, without counting a calorie, without tracking a macro, without feeling hungry, without feeling restricted. I lost 10 pounds. And those were the 10 stubborn pounds she hasn't been able to, to, to lose. So I was really, really thrilled for her. And really, so what Mike stands for is mindfulness, intuition, and consciousness. And that's that's what we focus on. Mindfulness, this is a game changer. If people take nothing away from this other than chewing your food to a pace before swallowing, and maybe you've heard it a million times, and maybe you've tried it a few times, but I'm telling you, by committing to chewing food to a pace before swallowing, which sounds really kind of gross, you know what I mean? <laughs> like it's, make a smoothie in your mouth. I think this sounds kind of gross. But once you create that as your way of eating, your habitual, just how you eat naturally, which will happen if you do it consistently, you start, number one, eating about half as much as you were before and just not getting over full. So you're still getting satisfied, but you're not getting overly full that's part of the mindfulness. You know, the saliva in our mouths has enzymes. It's our pre-digestion is in that chewing process. So we start digesting by chewing our food. 
So that's the mindfulness piece is really slowing down. It's paying attention to our food. It's looking at it, tasting it, fully being present with it. And in doing so, we also get in touch with our bodies. And that's where the intuition can work if we stop focusing on diet plans and counting and following somebody else's uh, rules and start listening to our own bodies, then uh, we can use our intuition to create the way of eating that works best for us and our unique bodies. And then consciousness, you know, that that really for me has a lot to do with understanding where food comes from, being aware. It's, it's awareness. It's awareness about where food comes from. Is it in line with our values? Is it in line with what we want for our health, for our longevity? Is it in line with uh, you know, our care for other people, for animals, for the planet. And then willpower gets taken out of the equation. It's not about willpower anymore. anymore. You know, as human beings, our willpower is always going to run out. So if we can start relying on using just a conscious choice, making a conscious choice every time we sit down to eat, um, then we can make, make changes consistently that add up very quickly. And if you got pounds to lose, the pounds are going to just disappear. People don't believe that though. They, they... I know, but it's true. It doesn't matter if they believe it or not. It's still true. That's right. <laughs> right? That's... Well, you... And I always say like, just because you have a thought or a belief doesn't make it true. True. And you know, when you talk about chewing food to a paste, Dr. Clapper says something similar to chewing your food to a cream. And that's not just a weight loss technique. That's just a health technique. Exactly. Yeah. And it was Dr. Clapper who, I mean, this changed my life. This isn't just me spouting this out to other people. I had, you know, I've been vegan 26, 26, 27 years now. Oh my God. Every time I say that, I feel like there's another year added on, (laughs) you know? Um, But no, I was, I was 15 when I went vegan, but even, even eating very healthy, I've been in the fitness industry since I was, you know, for 20 some years. Uh, eating, even eating very healthy. I had digestive issues. I had a lot of bloating after eating. I would have to be so careful about when I would work out and how, you know, it, I just experienced a lot of digestive distress and literally the only cha- thing I changed. And it was on the holistic holiday at sea cruise when I went and did a book signing on the, on the vegan cruise. And it was Dr. Clapper's talk. And I remember after his talk, I said, okay, and this was many, many years ago, went to lunch and I said, starts now, I'm going to give this a fair shot. And it literally changed my life. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. My digestive issues literally went away just by chewing my food to a paste. And when that happens, uh, you know, just a lot of things follow, you know, you start, start to just, you feel better. You start making better, better choices. It's not as hard. Yeah. And we, we had a guest on earlier talk about how mindfulness is very important when it comes to just health and weight loss. It does. And I think, you know, for, for some people, it sounds a little woo woo, you know, the mindfulness, you know, whatever, but, but it really is a game changer. And it's, it's, it's almost like too simple. It's almost too easy that that can't be the answer. Like, I feel like that's, that comes up, but it's, it's literally a game changer. So take nothing else away to your food. Well, it's not like we have teeth in our stomach. (laughs) It's a lot of work for <laughs> for those enzymes down there in our digestive juices. Right. I, I remember once interviewing Dr. Goldhammer and he was saying, you know, if you see corn in your poop, he goes, you know, you know, you're not chewing <laughs> poop. that's a tell all sign for sure. Um, Chef AJ, I was, I, I have a question for you about nutritional yeast because I, I've been vegan, like I said, 27 years And I think up until just like two months ago, I've always tried the nutritional yeast that's fortified Mm -hmm. and it's very yellow. And I have never really, everybody's like, oh, nutritional yeast is the best. And I, I was almost ashamed to be like, I don't really like it that much. Well, I just tried about two months ago, nutritional yeast that wasn't fortified. And I love, now I'm addicted. It's better tasting. You can actually taste those chemicals. Yes. So, yeah. I don't know what my question is, but I was. Yeah, no, do, well, doctor, you know, it's funny because Dr. Uh, Furman has always said to take the unfortified one. Really? Okay. You know, some doctors say, oh, it's better to be fortified with B vitamins, but from a taste standpoint, I, you're right. You can, you can, you can taste the, those chemicals yeah. in the, in the non-fortified. Yeah. Well, it's a game changer. So now I'm, now I'm recommending that. I mean, I, I, I take a compliment for, for the B vitamins. So I don't think 
I need the B vitamins. Yeah, no, probably not. But it's I don't know why they 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 for, you know, and even so, it, you can't just rely on fortified foods for no. the vitamin anyway. Whether it's plant milk or nutritional yeast, you'd have to eat an unthinkable unthinkable amount. You know. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you you are also doing some wonderful work with an animal sanctuary. I am, and I. These are my when I'm not up at the sanctuary. I put these guys on my bed because we have bunnies and uh, and hogs at our Hogs and Kisses Farm Sanctuary. I'm on the founding board and I make it up there as much as I can. It's in Virginia. I live down in Miami and we've got just we're a micro sanctuary. So we not only have our rescued animals, but we're also working on uh, providing grants to other micro sanctuaries. Uh, as part of our contribution, as well as doing a lot of educational content. Um, but it's very exciting that we are expanding, we are growing, we welcome two new farm pigs on. We've got three farm pigs that are about 700 pounds, and that's with weight loss. They have lost weight, as many people probably know. Uh, you know, a lot of these pigs as they get older, have a lot of issues, have a lot of health issues because they're bred to be so much bigger than they actually can handle. So at four years old, when we got them, they were very overweight because they were bred to be slaughtered and used for meat. So we just got two new young ones on. Uh, we've got five amazing uh, bunnies that we rescued. And for Giving Tuesday, we have a donor that is matching, uh, not only matching, but doubling all our donations. So through um, through tomorrow, at least. And we are expanding and we are looking for another board member as well. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because you that's why I said, well, why don't you come on the show? What, does anybody want to be on a board of Hogs and Kisses? What would that entail? Yeah, so we've got a, a beautiful team of three right now. We're looking to get a fourth board member who might help us specialize in the fundraising efforts. We meet once a week. I mean, sorry, once a month. And um, we're like, we're family and we've got this amazing sanctuary and we meet on Zoom and talk about what's best and how we're going to grow and um, how we're going to make a bigger impact. And it's, you know, it's a volunteer position, so not paid. So we're looking for someone who can spare a few hours a week uh, to help us with our fundraising. We're doing so many amazing things. And of course, we would love them to come visit. I, I go up there many times a year, especially when Ann, our founder, goes out of town. I go up and uh, hold down the fort and get to spend time with our amazing animals. And so, yeah. So if anybody is interested, I think in the, sh in the notes, we're going to put a link to both learn more about our sanctuary and a an email of for Anne, who's our founder. Um, so if you're interested, we would love to speak with you and see if you want to come on to our team and do some good deeds and uh, help us help us grow and flourish and save more animals and spread more awareness about compassion. Nice. Well, definitely put that in the show notes as well as the chat. So you mentioned the pigs need to lose weight. Are they using the mic method? <laughs> Man, they're tough to train on the on the mic method. I, I tell you what, I keep telling Ruby, Ruby is our like queen pig um, and she eats so fast. And I, I really work with her on this, but uh, but it is not it is not. Uh, we have one pig, Grace. Grace is the slowest eater of them all. And she's really got the mindfulness down pat. But Ruby, she's a tough one. She's, she's our, she's our, she's the head honcho and she's like, I'm going to eat mine. And then I'm going to go try to eat everybody else's too. That's so funny. But they're eating healthy now and they are, you know, they get to graze in the pastures and they've lost a, a tremendous amount of weight. What do they eat? Well, we, we actually feed our pigs. Um, we get it from Chewy, a pot belly uh, pig mix. They eat that with sunflower seeds and lots of supplements to go in there for their joints. Um, they are on, on some medications, two of them, for inflammation in their joints due to being overweight for so long. Um, so those are all, you know, pretty costly. Uh, but yeah, they pretty much, they root, they forage, they eat grass and roots. And uh, we try to keep them away. There, there are so many toxic, um, yeah, on my watch when I was up there taking care of them to the two boys, Got and one of the boys' names is Pachanga, which means party animal. And uh, Pachanga got into Pachanga and Fernando. The young ones got into some something that was toxic on on my watch, and that was very scary. Went to get the vet in there, and 
Um, but yeah, they they feed a little, feed twice a day, uh, and then roots roots and leaves and uh, grass. Wow, that must be so fun. Do you ever, you know, I, I've heard of some sanctuaries doing this where they they put cameras and people can watch. Oh, you yeah. know, them donate because they see what the animals are up to. That's you know what I haven't. That is a really good idea. We absolutely do have cameras in there. Um, and our founder is is always watching uh, them. She is she is so invested in these animals and their health. And uh, that's a really good idea. I wonder if we could do that. Yeah, and maybe you can either charge a very small amount for the stream, yeah. or just not, or just use the stream to get people to to donate. Yeah, we do do. We do have a great um, plaque system too for our donors. So along the fence, we do these beautiful uh, metal plaques for for donate for for our donors. Um, and you can put them in, in honor of, of somebody. And we have T-shirts and we do a contest every year in January, uh, T-shirt creation contest. So we have a new design every year from somebody. Um, and we do a little contest around that, which is fun. So, yeah, we try to have fun with it. But that would be a really, really good idea. We do have a bed and breakfast, too, that just oh, opened. Yeah, okay. it's been booked. It's in wine country, too. So there are all these beautiful uh, wineries around and, and cider places. And, and we've got a beautiful uh, bed and breakfast and we're gonna really work on creating kind of a retreat center too. So people can come and, and stay and over it overlooks the, the pastures and the Blue Ridge Mountains and or the uh, Appalachian Red Mountains, it's beautiful. Oh, nice. Here's a question from a live viewer named Jennifer. She says, what are your thoughts on drinking water while eating meals? Is it better afterwards or does it not matter? I see water as something that I like to drink water. First of all, when I feel hungry, the first thing I do is drink water. And sometimes our signals get a little mixed up and we might think we're hungry and we're actually thirsty. So usually for me, I, I drink some water and see if it's thirst that I'm feeling or if it's hunger. If it's hunger, if I'm still hungry, if I, after I drink water, I usually like to wait about 20 minutes and then have my meal. And I do, I don't drink a lot of water within my meal. I find that that um, isn't as helpful for uh, optimizing my digestive processes. So yeah, and then I wait until it's food has settled and digested a little to start drinking water again. So that's what I recommend for most. Yeah, I, I always was told so yeah, I, I don't eat and drink at the same time. I do my drinking first and then I wait because I always thought it, it was, it dilutes your digestive enzymes, you know? Yeah, that's what I have. The research I've done says the same thing. And if we're, if we're eating the way we're supposed to, the food is so water rich anyway, you know, yeah. we shouldn't be thirsty. We shouldn't have to drink, you know? Yes, our, because we're yeah. not pouring salt all over it or and we're having lots yeah. of, yeah, water rich yeah. food. People love the ideas for the live stream for the pigs or the bunnies or yeah, both. Both. And, oh, the yeah. bunnies are so cute. And you put them right where they have the, you know, Chunk the Groundhog. Have you seen Chunk the Groundhog? Yeah. 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 So we, yeah, we have a little camera and that right where they eat and, and when they chew their lettuce, it's so cute. <laughs> They're so cute. It's so fun watching animals eat. They, it, and they love their vegetables. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. It's amazing what this little bunny, how much, how much greens they eat eat and all the and you know what Anne does a really good job I encourage you guys to follow hogs and kisses on on social because Anne does such a good job at educating I was just talking to my dad the other day who was like I love watching those because I'm learning so much it's I I had no idea I mean I'm Anne and I are like two girls from Miami I mean I, I've been here for 20 some years knew nothing about farm animals so it's been such an amazing journey uh, learning about these animals, going up to pick up these pigs from this production farm that where we rescued them from and, and you know, bringing them back and, and just everything we're learning. And, and Anne does such a beautiful job at kind of, of making you feel part of it, making you feel part of this sanctuary. When, where is the sanctuary again, Jennifer wants to know? It's outside of Charlottesville, Virginia, in North Garden, Virginia. Yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful area. Nice. Yeah. So going back to your mic method, mindfulness, yeah. intuition, intuition, and consciousness. So you talked about the M, but you didn't really talk about the I and the C. Yeah, the intuition piece is, is really, and, and I do this with exercise now too, but it's really about connecting with your body and using your body's natural 
intelligence to let you know what to eat and how much to eat. And the, the I want to say problem, but the process to get there is, is a process because most of us are so disconnected from our bodies in that we've just learned to follow experts or diets or this many calories or this many macros. Here, I'm going to try this diet. So I'm going to eat this many grams of, uh, you know, I need 60 grams of protein a day and I want to keep my carbs down. And, you know, just following other people's prescriptions as opposed to saying, let me figure out what feels good. And, you know, I always, I talk about breakfast and thinking outside the box. I mean, what do you eat for breakfast, Chef AJ? I, I eat lunch for breakfast. <laughs> okay. You're, and you're an intermittent fasting person. Yeah. I mean, not because I'm trying the intermittent fast because I just yeah. get hungry till about 12 o'clock right after well, my show. And so I had soup today uh, because I'm a, I'm a little bit of a cold. I had soup and rice, but usually it'd be something like sweet, you know, a starch and a veggie. And then if I'm hungry, fruit for dessert. Yeah. Well, you're, you're using your intuition. You're not following a, a plan. You're saying I'm going to eat when I'm hungry, which just kind of makes sense. Now we have to get to that place where we can do that. And sometimes that's a process, but for me, I do the same thing. I, I eat when I'm hungry. Sometimes that's seven 30 in the morning. Sometimes that's 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and what I've learned to eat for breakfast and I've tried lots of different things. I've tried doing the fruit thing for breakfast. I've tried doing the smoothie thing for breakfast and what I've really created, um, through experimentation. And I like to think about this as kind of like a game, like a, let's make this into a fun game. Let me see what it is that I can eat. That's going to give me energy. That's going to make me feel my best. And for me, that's greens and beans, greens and beans. That's what I eat every morning for breakfast, greens and beans. I change up the greens and I change up the beans. Um, I usually sprinkle on some sort of little, you know, seeds or nuts on there as well, just a little bit. Um, lately, it's been kale and my favorite has been kale, white beans with lemon juice. Um, uh, and then I add some sprinkles of toasted pumpkin seeds and lots of nutritional yeast that's not fortified. I love that. Um, for a long time, it was... Uh, chickpeas with cucumbers and tomatoes and avocado, but yeah, greens, greens and beans, greens and beans. And that just works really well. And I, I discovered that not by, uh, you know, following somebody else's plan, but by experimenting and figuring that out for myself. And when I eat it very slowly, it keeps me really satisfied and full for, for many hours. And that just is very convenient. And, uh, it supports my fitness. It supports my workouts and yeah, I've been doing a lot of calisthenics. I'm feeling really good and having some fun with some animal, animal locomotives lately too. And, and for me, yeah. So same with fitness. Yeah. It's like, let's find what's, what's going to work best for you. What do you do? What, what do you mean by calisthenics? I think when I think calisthenics, I think Jack Lane. like uh, what, what, what are calisthenics? Yeah. So pretty much body weight movements. And I do a lot like with the bar. So I'm doing lots of pull-ups and push-ups and squats and um, going towards the advanced movements like handstands. I'm a handstandaholic. I love doing handstands. So I try to do a handstand everywhere I go. Um, and those are skills. I, it's like skills that you can build up and, and they're very measurable. So even though I'm not into measuring calories and macros, I am into saying, oh, I want to see how many pull-ups I can do, like challenging myself. And then you can use things like bands that you put over the bar and they basically create an assisted pull-up machine. All you need is a bar. So with a bar uh, and you can do some parallel bars as well, doing dips and things like that. But with a band, you can, you don't have to have those things on your own. And one of my clients are enjoying doing too, is having, setting some goals um, around body weight type exercises, because it's very empowering. It's very empowering to be able to push yourself up. And it's very also functional, functional for, uh, you know, growing old into old age and being able to push yourself up and getting out of bed and doing those activities of daily living that'll keep you active and healthy for the rest of your life, really. So it's exciting to me. And I love to being, being able to do it outside. Of course, I live in Miami, so I can do that year round. That's not the case for everybody, I realize. Um, but yeah, calisthenics is fun. It's fun. Do you know any of the other vegans in Miami? I, I believe Jeanette, the, the uh, do you know her, the raw food girl? Yes, I, I've i never met her in person, um, but we've got Sean from SoFlo Vegans. We've, we've got so many people here. Uh, Jackie, 
um, plant chicks, but no longer plant chicks. And yeah, we've got it. We've got a bunch of people here. So yeah, I make, I make the rounds. That's great. Such a yeah. big, yeah, you got to come hang out sometime. Um, do you eat three fixed meals a day or are you more of a grazer? Asks one of the live viewers. Yes, this is a good question. And, you know, I think I do better on three meals, but oftentimes because I work at home, I, I graze. But if I'm out and about and, and yeah, I, you know what, it's funny. I, I tried to, um, I got an office space at a community workspace, like a, a borough, kind of like a we work. And now I appreciate working at home so much more. <laughs> but yeah, being at home, it's, it's a little, little, little tougher to, for me, I, I, I end up grazing. That works fine for me too. Well, it just depends what you graze on. I think, you know, if it's whole yeah. natural food, like fruits and vegetables and beans, that's different than, you know, Cheetos. Oh yes. I'm not grazing on Cheetos. Yes. I have cut, cut up carrots and celery and um, do a little bit of apples and some nut butters and eat. I eat so much greens. Like, I mean, I'm like, you I'm like <laughs> you know, one of those. And, and I have to say, I've learned Trader Joe's kale, like already chopped kale. It's so easy. So good. And it, it's so, they do a good job compared to whole foods, which has all the stems still all in it. Stems. Yeah. So just, if you have a Trader Joe's, I'm telling you like game changer there. I love Trader Joe's. Oh. Isn't that amazing? That's really. my favorite. Tony says, Ella's skin has a glow and it looks so healthy. What's her secret? Hmm. That's, um, the that's greens, <laughs> yeah, greens and beans, <laughs> greens and beans. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I try to stay out of the sun, but I get a little sun. I, I use vegan cruelty-free, um, and do you have a favorite I had Kaylin I don't know if you're familiar with Kaylin Harwell I had her on the show on Saturday I love her stuff no. it's, it's all vegan it's like made out of food basically oh that sounds amazing um what am I using these days I, I I guess I don't have a regular regimen which is interesting um yeah I can't even think of it now Okay. Well, if you think of it, let us know. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer says, do you stop eating a certain amount of hours before you go to bed? I do. I can't, I, it's minimum three, but I prefer it when it's five, if I, if at all possible. Yeah, I prefer, I prefer two to three hours before I, except I go to bed really early. So it, it can be tough. Sometimes I go to bed early. I get up very, very early. Uh, well, I don't know if 444 is very early, but I think very early. that's early. Yeah. yeah, I need my quiet, my quiet time is in the morning. Um, but what I do notice is that it's very important for me to have 12 hours, even though I, I don't account for my just intuitively 12 hours between dinner and breakfast is a bare minimum of what my body needs to really fully digest um, the, the food from the night before. So I, I do put that into place. Um, but yeah, I get it getting up at 444. I have my time of my morning ritual, which has increased greatly this year after experiencing burnout at the beginning of the year. Uh, this has been a doozy of a year, Chef AJ. I don't know if you know, but it's been a, doozy. Been a doozy. I've ended up in the Amazon jungle doing a 12-day ayahuasca retreat. No way. <laughs> wow. What was that like? I was intense, but it was a beautiful, I don't know if anybody's heard of Gabor Mate. Um, I've heard of him. You went with him? No, I didn't go. I, but the place I chose was because of him. He actually, he's, he's just phenomenal. That man is amazing. Um, but he went down to be a facilitator at the facility. It's called the Temple of the Way of Light. And they ended up kicking him out, the shaman. And they said that he had too much dark energy. And he tells this story. Anyway, there's a big testimonial from him about his experience being, uh, you know, getting his guidance there when he went down to be a facilitator. And I trust him. And um, so, yeah, this is, an amazing, amazing place. Uh, flew into Lima, then Iquitos, then went out into the into the jungles of Peru, the Temple of the Way Light, six ceremonies over 11 nights. And it was, uh, yes, it was transformational. It was intense. They have a beautiful system, um, real deal shaman. And whew, yeah, it, it, it put me out there. It Did was, you document any of it? Like film any of it or... I, I have, 
a few reels on it. Um, I really made an intentional effort to put my phone away once I got there and be, be fully present for that whole time. I realized my addiction to doing was so intense and I was so burnt out um, that I knew I needed to learn to just be, to be able to, to sit still and, and be and not be on my phone and not be on social media. And that was a beautiful, beautiful experience connecting with the other people. There's 20 of us. It was a four mostly service providers and therapists. Um, so we had a, yeah, a 20, lots of psychologists and therapists there and very self-reflective and group sessions. And it was really powerful. Really powerful. Wow. Sounds, that sounds amazing, but intense. It was, it was. I do write about my burnout in my blog on sexyfitvegan.com. It's called something like, you know, burnout and depression and uh, psychedelics and, and mm -hmm. more, something like that. So it's, yeah, it's, it kind of chronicles my journey into it. And then I, I did a little piece afterwards as well. Well, if you just go back to the way the animals in the sanctuary are, they're just being, they're not doing. I know. I got to learn from the animals. Yeah, I just got, you got to hang out with them. You didn't need to go to the Amazon. You didn't need to just go in the pig pen. <laughs> <laughs> um, Susanna says, does Ella have any tips for someone trying to lose the last 10 pounds or so after a six, a 70 pound weight loss? It's just very slow now. Yeah. Yeah. And hitting that plateau is interesting. I, I'm curious if, if you're a mindful eater <laughs> as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, all the chef AJ's tips and are, are amazing. And then using the mic method, the mindfulness piece is, is really huge. And, you know, I, I go, I, we, we really, with my clients, I, I go into, kind of getting to the root causes as well of, you know, why the weight came on in the beginning. And a lot of times there's a lot of um, lack of self-compassion, a lot of lack of self-love that's in there that, that I like to explore with people. And when we can get to that place where we're fully present and conscious and, and um, seeing food as a form of self-care, as a form of self-love, a way to nourish and, and fuel ourselves, um, stress can also be a factor in, in struggling to lose those last pounds. So, you know, hormones and cortisol. And so creating and, and gaining tools to deal with stress in a healthy way can be more impactful than I think a lot of people think. Yeah. And sleep, sleep, people sleep. underestimate the importance of sleep. A thousand percent. Yeah. So Tony says, Ella, what are your thoughts on coconut oil for cooking, eating, drinking, and skincare? I think it's only good for one of those four personally, but I'll let Ella answer. Yes, I love it for skincare. Absolutely. I lather up in, in coconut oil. Um, but no, I do not use it for, for cooking. I have it's interesting because I'm, you know, I've been vegan basically my whole life. And a lot of my family actually has as well uh, for the last 20 years. And we have high cholesterol in our family and there's has it's it's been made a difference for my father, for example, and my mother to uh, reduce or to eliminate coconut oil because they're not eating dietary cholesterol per se, but the saturated fats um, can make a difference. So I, I stay away from it for for consumption myself. Yeah. What do you think the biggest mistake some of your clients make when it comes to weight loss? Is this your question or no, I'm just, yeah, I'm just asking like, cause I, 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 I mean, I have my thoughts, but I'm just curious what you see, like if you see a pattern. Yeah, I think it's, it's the focus on for, for my clients, the focus on hyper-focus on weight loss really is a sabotaging scenario uh, because they start to do the yo-yoing. They start to follow this diet and that diet. They ignore, like get further and further away from seeing food as, as your friend, it's like food becomes the enemy. And I'm going to, you know, being hungry is like a rite of passage. I'm going to restrict and, you know, building, just ruining your relationship with food instead of focus on, on nourishing our relationship with food and seeing food as something that's, that's a beautiful part of our lives that we can work with and that we can use to care for ourselves and to 
create a healthy body and feel good in our own own body and our skin. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 I, I didn't read Dr. Furman earlier today for the weight loss summit. And he basically said the same thing that that's the mistake is that people are just doing it for weight loss and they're not doing it for health and longevity. And then it's not going to stick. And the same thing goes with the uh, exercise. It's like, I mean, and, and I'm, I'm feeling the effects from doing it for a lot, large part of my life is of overtraining of saying, I'm feel guilty about these calories and now I'm going to go burn them off. So exercises, it's like this never ending, exhausting cycle of trying to burn off the guilty calories you feel about eating that you, you know, feel for what you ate and it's exhausting and it causes overtraining and it's, it's sabotaging people. Yep. We can get as a punishment. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Exercise because you love your body, not because you hate it. Oh, I love that. That's, that almost sounds like a good t-shirt. Yeah, I'm, I'm, there might be a t-shirt. Yeah. Um, is it people, the t-shirts for hogs and kisses, how do people get those on the website? Yeah, every, yeah everything. If you go to hogs and kisses, uh, dot org, so hogs, a N D kisses.org, you'll find a link to our t-shirt. Um, yeah, they're super cute, super cute t-shirts, lots of choices. I think it's on threadless, but there's a link on the website. There's a link to, to donate. There's a link to get donate for a plaque. Any donations that happen today and tomorrow will be doubled by our generous donor. So that's very cool for Giving Tuesday, 501c3. We're a nonprofit. That, um, so, of course, you can get tax dedu- deductions from your donations. Nice. Uh, Jennifer says, when you travel, did you travel yourself? I'm wanting, I'm working on wanting to travel and experience, but have a fear to go alone, as I think something might happen. It could still happen yeah. if you go with somebody. Travel to specifically to well, I guess Peru? to the in general, and then maybe your last big trip to the Amazon. Yeah, I went alone um, because I mean I, I traveled alone because I felt like I needed to let go of uh, connections and preconceived like who I am in relation to other people. I wanted to be able to let go of all of that. I wanted to be able to go. I, I felt like this journey needed to happen on my own. So I, I went alone. I'm I'm a pretty bold, courageous human being. So I just did it. Um, but when, when traveling, I, my biggest tip for traveling in general, in terms of being healthy, is I, I create whole like bootable kind of things to take on the plane. So I do not take any of those trail mixes or snacks or you know, nuts and seeds and all of those very dense foods that you can just sit there on the plane and you've got nothing else to do, but eat all of it. And next thing you know, you've eaten like an entire day's worth of calories in one sitting. So I actually make a very hearty um, bowl with greens and beans and sweet potatoes and, you know, something very satisfying and nutrient dense, but not so calorie dense. So I, I'll take that on the plane. And I, you don't know how many times I've, I've been stopped, you know, in, in security sometimes because I'll take it in a little cooler bag and they usually have to check that separately. And I swear, like people are drooling while they're checking. They're like, oh, that looks so good. I'm like, I, know, I, I, love, to eat it. <laughs> I love when TSA comments on my food and says, yeah. Is, did you bring food for the week? And I'm like, no, this is no. just <laughs> the plane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't understand calorie density. What was the eating like on your adventure? Like that, did they serve you food? How did you eat? Vegan? Yes, all, all, and, and then the month leading up to it, I did the whole dieta, which, and which was basically your, your diet, <laughs> salt, oil, sugar free, um, but also no caffeine. Uh, I'm somebody who uses um, medical marijuana to sleep at some time. So that was all gone. Um, and yeah, so very, very, very clean. Also no spicy foods, nothing that really like was exciting. <laughs> so no, we couldn't eat spicy foods ahead of time. It has to do with the energies in our, in our systems and our bodies. Um, so you want to go with basically a very open energy system that will allow the, the med- the plant medicine to really do its thing. So while we were there, it was, um, and it was really actually annoying, uh, I have to say, because the, the one, the one, I don't even want to say complaint, but the one improvement that I suggested from them, because it was so extraordinary, everything about it was that they, they did serve fish and chicken and eggs along with always having the vegan options. Um, but sometimes they would do a substitute and say, here's the vegan substitute for 
for fish and it was like snow peas. And I <laughs> give me some beans, please. Like I gotta get some beans. Um, so that was my my one my one suggestion for them was give me some more beans. But they had uh -huh foods that was all they were all everything was brought in by human beings every day um because it was you know there was no vehicles or anything like that so it was you should have made it vegan I agree a thousand percent yeah there's just no no reason why not how do you get a connection to Charlottesville Virginia how did I Is yeah that, okay uh yes yeah, so Anne is my, my bestie. She lives in, she lived in Miami. Um, so we, we know each other from here. We've known each other for many, many years and her husband's, uh, ex and his, his son live in Charlottesville. So they ended up moving to Charlottesville and that she, she, her kind of stipulation <laughs> to him was, okay, we're going to move away from my friends and where I love and the warmth. And, um, so I want a sanctuary. That's what I want to do with my, my time. And, he said, all right, let's do it. So they built a they built their own uh, home on the land. I went up uh, when before the home was finished. So I went up and stayed in a an RV with no electricity when we brought back our first few animals. We got the fences up. And um, so, yeah, I went up and, and stayed up there for a while. And like I said, I'm up there quite a bit um, helping out every every chance I can. Oh, nice. Jill says, I'm from Miami. Hi. Hey, Jill. Where in Miami are you from? Yeah, type it in the chat, Jill, please. And here's a question from Tony. Does Ella count calories? I'm guessing no. No way. That takes all the fun out of food. I, I eat intuitively. I eat mindfully. And uh, I give my body what it tells me it needs and how much it needs and of what it needs. And Do you eat a lot of white potatoes or do you skip them? I don't eat a lot of white potatoes, not because I think they're, they're bad. Um, I love mashed potatoes. I just don't like, and I might, I get made fun of for this. Yeah. I, I just, I'm not a big, I don't love them. But you love sweet potatoes, right? I do love sweet potatoes. What'd you have for Thanksgiving? Oh no, you, you don't want to know. No, <laughs> no, no, I, we didn't have, um, we, we actually did a new tradition this year. Uh, my sister lives here with her three small children and we decided to just go to the beach. So oh. we really didn't, we didn't really didn't do a Thanksgiving. We did a, a beach fun day and, um, and yeah, later that night we did have some much, my, I, I, my mom and I had some mushroom gravy and, uh, we did have a few slices of the, uh, like field roast or something like that. Um, That's and okay. I had my, my kale. That's okay. Uh, Bella says, uh, can you give her some tips for intuitive eating? I struggle with deciding what I want to eat. So I tend to stick to the same things. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because we, when we talk about the intuitive eating, we've got to also take away the cravings that are based on addictions. So it, this question is, is dependent on if you've got any food addictions, if you've got these cravings, because they're cravings because your body and your maybe emotionally and, and physically are addicted to these foods because they've got the salt or the you know fats and the sugars. So if that's the case, you know, it's like a drug addict, like does it just because your body's craving it doesn't mean that that's your intuition saying, this is what my body needs. So we've got to first clear out those addictions and then be able to have that connection with our body. And yeah, I mean, ideally, you know, I look at things from what's totally ideal and that's having so much variety and eating something very different every day. That's ideal. And what's, you know, not ideal is eating salt, oil, sugar, you know, these fats. And, you know, somewhere in the middle is here, I'm going to eat mostly whole plant foods and I'm going to do as much variety as possible. And sometimes I'm going to repeat myself. And I, I repeat my meals quite a bit uh, until I get tired of them. And then I switch them out. So I kind of am on a, on a cycle of, um, you know, like right now I'm doing mostly, mostly kale as my, as my green in the morning and I'll get tired of that soon. And I'll maybe, and then I'll probably go back to spinach and arugula and, and I'll mix it up. But sometimes I, I go a few weeks of eating pretty similar things. And I, I think, you know, ideally, yes, you change it up every day, but let's, let's kind of look at the big picture and say, no, that's not, not the end of the world. 
Yeah, I mean, the animals at the, the sanctuary don't switch it up that much and they seem to thrive. I don't know. Our bunnies eat a v- way more variety than I do. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, bunnies oh, yeah. are so cute. They're yeah. so cute. So, so cute. cute. So if anybody wants to work with you, is that a possibility now? Or how does that it work? It is. It is. I, I'm, I work with only a handful of clients at a time. But um, but yeah, I am open to, to a couple more. So yeah, if you have any interest in working with me, you're welcome to visit my website. I've got a contact form on ellamajors.com or email me directly. We're going to put ella at ellamajors.com in the the notes. So you're welcome to email me directly. Okay, well, thank you. And thanks for all the wonderful work you do at Hogs and Kisses. Oh, it's, it's truly like it fills my cup. It makes me so happy. It completes me. So I'm very grateful to be a part of that. And and uh, and thank you, Chef AJ, as always. It's so fun to be on yes. the show. And like Karen says, I'm also from Miami. And if anybody wants to be a board member for Hogs and Kisses or knows somebody, please contact Ella. Are you still doing your podcast? So I, I've got a new one in the works. So it will be out soon. So now we've got 100 episodes on the Vegan Life Coach Academy, which I still encourage people to go from from episode one. I talk a lot about mindfulness, intuition, eating, um, got some great interviews. Chef AJ's on there. So Vegan Life Coach uh, podcast on Apple and all your major players. Uh, Definitely check that out in the meantime. And then 2023, you will see a new brand new exciting podcast coming out for me. Great. Well, thanks. And I really enjoyed catching up with you. Me too. Thanks. Thanks, Ella. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. If you want Ella's book, you can't get it anywhere else but the bundle and you have only six hours to get it. So you can look at the link below in the show notes and get it from Ella if you like. And come back tomorrow when my guest is Ms. Fit Vegan. She's going to talk. She's also from Miami. She's going to talk about how to buy, store, and ripen every single fruit. Thanks again, Ella. Take care.